You know, for decades, there's been one thing that unites every single C++ developer, and that's the shared, agonizing pain of waiting for code to compile. So today, we're going to dive into C++'s oldest, and you could argue, most expensive problem, and the revolutionary solution that's been, believe it or not, decades in the making. I mean, just think about it. If you've ever written C++, you've done this. You're staring at a progress bar, just waiting. Now, multiply that by millions of developers every single day. We're talking countless hours just gone. This isn't just some minor annoyance, right? It's a massive hidden cost that's baked right into the very fabric of software development. It's a tax, a tax on productivity that we've been paying for nearly 50 years. Okay, so how on earth did we get here? Well, the root of this entire massive problem is actually almost shockingly simple. It goes all the way back to the C preprocessor and a single command that every developer knows like the back of their hand, pound include. And that's literally it. That's all it does. It's not smart. It has no idea what your code means. It just finds a file and copy pastes its entire contents right into your source code. And look, this beautifully simple mechanism is what gave C so much of its power and flexibility, but it's also the very thing that laid the foundation for decades of excruciating build time pain. And oh boy, did this create a cascade of problems. First up, you've got what we call the reparse tax. This is where your poor compiler has to read and analyze the exact same text from, say, IOStream thousands of times in a single build. It's just brutal. Then you get these transitive nightmares. You think you're just including one small header, but nope. It secretly pulls in this massive tangled web of other files. And of course, who can forget the infamous fragility? You change the order of your includes, boom, the build breaks. You change one tiny line in a core header and, well, as one developer put it, you're basically rebuilding the whole world. So with the language itself not offering a solution for a long, long time, what do you do? Well, the community did what it always does. It stepped up. Developers started building layers of tooling on top of this fragile foundation just to manage the chaos. And the first big beast they had to tackle was the problem of external libraries. And I want to be really clear here, we're not just talking about a couple of code libraries. The problem is the entire toolchain ecosystem. We're talking about the compiler version, the operating system, the build tools. All of these moving parts have to align absolutely perfectly for anything to work. So to try and manage all this, package managers started to pop up. The two biggest players today are VCPK and Conan, and they have completely different philosophies. You've got VCPK, which comes from Microsoft, and it's kind of like a centralized app store. It's curated, it's pretty simple, and it works great for most standard projects. On the other hand, you have Conan, which is totally decentralized and incredibly flexible. It's built for the really tough stuff, like complex versioning and cross-compiling for weird systems. Now, neither All right, so once you've wrangled your dependencies, you've got the next huge challenge, actually orchestrating the build. This is the job of the build system. Think of it like the project foreman on a construction site, telling the compiler what to build, and crucially, in what order. And the evolution here is pretty interesting. The story really starts way back in the 70s with Make. It was the original, but it really struggled with complex dependency graphs. Then came AutoTools, which was amazing because it solved cross-platform builds, but man, it was notoriously difficult to use. And that brings us to today, where we have these modern meta-built systems like CMake and Meson, which are just on another level. Now here's the cool part about meta-built systems like CMake. They don't actually compile your code themselves. That's not their job. Instead, they generate instructions for another, much faster tool. They brilliantly separate the logic of what needs to be built from the execution of actually building it. This lets them create files for a tool called Ninja. And Ninja, well, Ninja is obsessed with one thing and one thing only, speed. It's designed to run build commands in parallel as fast as is physically possible. And the difference is just staggering. We're talking about builds that used to take minutes with Make, finishing in just a few seconds with Ninja. Okay, so package managers and these super fast build systems, they were fantastic, but let's be honest, they were bandages, really, really good bandages, but bandages nonetheless on a very deep wound. But then came C++20, and with it, the language finally offered a real cure for the original disease, and that cure is modules. This, my friends, is the holy grail that C++ developers have been waiting for, for decades. And on the surface, it looks like such a simple syntax change. I mean, we go from the old way, include, which we now know is just a fragile text-based copy-paste job, to the new way, import, 
An import refers to a robust, pre-compiled binary artifact. This one little change illustrates the entire fundamental shift. We are no longer just mindlessly copying pasting text. So what's the magic behind import? It all comes down to something called a binary module interface, or a BMI. The best way to think about a BMI is like a, a pre-digested summary of a module's public-facing parts. So now when the compiler sees import STD, it doesn't have to go open some massive text file and parse it all over again. No, it just opens this compact, efficient, binary BMI file and instantly knows everything it needs to know. Just like that, the reparse tax is completely gone. But this, of course, created a really fascinating new chicken and egg problem for the build systems. And the lead of CMake, Bill Hoffman, put it absolutely perfectly. He said, OK, to know which modules to import, you have to scan the source code. But to compile that source code, you first need the already compiled modules. So as he put it, what you're saying is, we have to compile the code before we can compile the code. It's a fantastic little paradox. So how do you solve that? While well, modern build systems came up with this clever new three-step dance. Step one, the toolchain does a super fast scan of all your source files, and it's looking for only two things, the import and export keywords. Step two, now that it has a map of all the dependencies, it compiles only the module interfaces into those binary BMI files. And then finally, step three, it compiles your actual code, and as it goes, it just feeds in the pre-built BMIs that it needs. Problem solved. So that's it, the promised land is here. We can all start using modules, and our builds will be instantaneous. Problem solved forever, right? Well, not quite. The reality on the ground is that this amazing future is still very much under construction. And this brings us to the big, crucial question that pretty much every C++ developer is asking right now. Can I, and maybe more importantly, should I, use modules in my production project today? Well, if you look at the data, the answer is, uh... Probably not. There's actually a website called arewemodulesyet.com, and it tracks adoption across all the major open source projects. And the answer right now is a pretty resounding no. It got so bad that one C++ expert joked at a conference that at the current rate of adoption, we'll probably finish porting all the major libraries by the year 2626. And the hurdles here are very real and very technical. For starters, support in major tools like CMake is still officially flagged as experimental. Those BMI files I mentioned, they are incredibly finicky. If you compile a module with one set of compiler flags and then try to use it in a file with slightly different flags, your build just fails. End of story. The build system support is also pretty uneven. Ninja and Visual Studio are way ahead of the game, but others are still lagging way behind. And yeah, as a lot of the early adopters have found out the hard way, good reference material is still surprisingly hard to come by. And this is a really crucial point to understand. Modules are a revolutionary fix for the core compilation problem, but they are not a magic bullet for everything. They absolutely do not replace package managers like Conan or VCPKG. You still need a way to get the libraries and all their dependencies onto your machine. Modules just give you a much, much faster and more robust way to use them once they're actually there. And all of this leads us to the final big question. Will modules finally solve C++'s oldest, most expensive problem? Or are they just creating the next one? There's no doubt that modules are the future. They are a powerful, elegant solution to a problem that has plagued this language since the very beginning. But the road to get there is proving to be long, and it's filled with all new kinds of complexity. The old tax of waiting for the compiler might be going away, but it seems like it's being replaced by a new one, the cost of pioneering a massive and still evolving new ecosystem.